Now for tonight, would you open your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 14. And verse 26. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence, and his children shall have a place of refuge. Well, <clears throat> turn to Numbers chapter 35. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, book number 4, and chapter 35. Rather than reading the rest of this chapter for you tonight, Moses says, God spoke to me, and he said, we're going to have cities of refuge. Now, <clears throat> these cities were located strategically in Israel, it being a very mountainous country, Five places throughout the country that no matter where you lived, you could see one of those mountains, and there was a city of refuge there for you. Now, the reason for that city of refuge is if someone uh, in today's uh, world, we'd say accidentally, but there are no accidents, had um, killed someone and they had not intended to, the head of an axe come off, something like that. The family of the one who had died could get a hold of that person and kill them justifiably by the law. But God said, I want these cities of refuge. There are going to be six of them. And um, you um, place these in those strategic places. Now, the purpose of these cities of refuge was for safety. Refuge meaning asylum or protection. Now, the individual had to stay there in that city until the high priest died. Then he was free to go out and no one could do anything to him. But if he left before the high priest died, he could be killed immediately. And so, <clears throat> in your outline tonight, some feeble-minded man put in five of the cities and not all six, but I'll get the point across anyway. The first is um, Hebron, and that shows joint association together with. Shechem, a place of burdens. Golan, this is really an important one. Exile. And exile means that one is disgraced as low sexually and debased as one can be, full of shame. Kiddish, to pronounce clean. And Ramoth of value. So now we're going to take those five cities and we're going to put them together in this kind of a sentence. Those totally shamefully disgraced may be joined together in the place where burdens are accepted pronounced clean, and they're of value. Remember what he said in Colossians 1? Uh, holy, unblameable, and unreprovable in his sight. Totally of value in the eyes of the Lord. And so the individual who has been elected from God from before eternity, and I've discussed that several times recently in messages, has this hope before them 
that um, let me hide. Turn to Psalm 130. Let me hide. And um, let me just see if the high priest died for me. That's so important. The high priest, you know, is, of course, Christ. So in verse 5, he says, I wait for the Lord. My soul doth wait, and in his word do I hope. Standing back as we're waiting and hoping for God to reveal, yes, he died for me. I discussed that thoroughly last Sunday, as a matter of fact. Verse 6, my soul waiteth for the Lord more than they that watch for the morning. I say more than they that watch for the morning. Let Israel hope in the Lord. And so... We come back to our outline and we pause and think of these cities of refuge that are there for his elect. And um, we run and hide in the death of the high priest. Then we're totally set free. Romans 7 or rather, uh, 6 or 7, I believe it is, he says, He that is dead is, in, is free indeed. And Christ, our high priest, has died. And because we're hid in the city of refuge, the protecting care of Almighty God through His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and He who is the high priest, Christ, died for us, thus we are set free Indeed, no more penalty. Now we come to point number one in your outline tonight. There is safety. Sinner, I tell you, there is safety for you. Your safety is in association with the protection of the high priest. Now that protection in the high priest and from the high priest is in his death. People, you have no place else for their safety but in the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. All charged against you, Ephesians 2, um, 10, I believe, no, a little later than that, but anyway, uh, Colossians chapter 2. At any rate, he says this, all that was written against us was taken out of the way and he nailed it to his cross. Everything against us his people, taken out of the way by the Lord Jesus Christ, and thus they are completely, totally free in Christ, as the word refuge means, totally immune, totally protected by the death of the Lord Jesus Christ. And there's safety in that your burdens may be brought there. Where? To the point and place of Christ's death for you. Each and every burden you have, you take to God Almighty through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, shed on Calvary. The death of Christ is where your burdens are to be brought, and that's where you'll find true immunity, protection, and refuge. Though you are, and I know that if I ask each one to fill out a piece of paper, there wouldn't be anyone here say that they were the scum of the earth from a sexual misbehaving way. But he uses that example to show just how awful we are as a sinner in the eyes of Almighty God. You see, when he says exile, he's talking about the lowest point that a person can possibly be in this world. Uh, 
sexually debased and totally full of shame. That's the background of the word. And he uses that to show how we as sinners, totally debased, full of shame before Almighty God, ain't no way to get lower than we were. Worse than the scum of the earth. That's what we were. But he, in one word, pronounces his people clean. In one word, he simply says to them, you're clean. All brought against you, taken out. Turn to, to uh, Colossians chapter 2. I want you to see this again. I've shown this to you many times. But Colossians chapter 2. And I want to begin reading in verse 13. You being dead in your sins, that's the, um, uh, that's the exile part. Dead in your sins, the uncircumcision of flesh, hath he quickened together with you, having with him, having forgiven you all trespasses. Verse 14, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against you personally, dear one. Contrary to you, he took it another way and nailed it to his cross. Christ says, he has forgiven you all trespasses. The high priest has died. The declaration to you, you're completely, totally free. There is no charge against you at all. And in that proclamation of saying that you're clean, you're totally forgiven, he includes this embracing thought, you are of value. Don't you forget that. To Almighty God, you are of value. Point number two in your outline tonight. For there to be safety, there must be the death of the high priest. Jesus Christ went to the cross. All, see it in Isaiah 53 and John 19, so many other places. All that was written against us, the Father charged to his Son in our stead. Brought all of his, and yeah, I'm picking these words on purpose, all of the Father's justified holy wrath and hate against us, meted out upon the Lord Jesus Christ on that cross, bringing him to that point where he lays down his life willingly, delightfully, joyfully for his people, to satisfy his father about the elect. In that process, he dies. And in his death is total freedom for everyone for whom he died because that charged against them was charged to him, paid for, and the father is satisfied. You can see that in Isaiah 53 verse 11. But you, as a sinner, if you've never come to an awareness of Christ, in Psalm 130, you are to wait until he reveals to you that Jesus Christ died for you personally. As he reveals that to you through the word, through the preaching, etc., God will speak those words that he says in Romans 5.1, there is therefore now peace. And indeed there is peace. But a final word of warning. If you will not stay until he reveals, and if you go out from underneath the protection of the death of the high priest, sure eternal death to you. That'll help you.